Hello, all you uh, hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. You know, or we say the things on here that nobody dares say. Today, I'm joined by Jerry from Northern Ireland. How are you doing, Jerry? I'm all right, Russ. How are you? All right, I've been out in rain today, an hour and 20 minutes. And... Uh, my phone's gone, like, you know, black and white. When you turn it on, I can't get it to go cool. So I've stuck it in a... <laughs> rice. Oh, what? It's an old it's joke. Trick. You know when you get a watch that's got a bit of a mist? You know, yeah. Station on the screen. What, what some jewellers do, they'll stick it in a bag of rice and they'll bill you 300 quid and that. So it's an old jeweller's trick, man. I'm going to try that. If not, it's certainly uh, right, doesn't it? We're texting people in rain. <laughs> How are you? What t shirt we got on, Jerry? Let's have a look. It's a Danish heavy metal band from the 80s. But you had a Jaws one on the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I'm a big Jaws fan. Yeah, it's, it's uh, probably a film I've watched the most, mate. What, Jaws? It's an old one, isn't it? Yeah, the old ones are the best. Yeah, well, it's all CGI now, isn't it? Uh, that's pure shape, mate. Can't be the big rubber robot shark. <laughs> uh, I don't know where to start. We're going to do a one part, one part of 40 minutes. Uh, 96,000 sell out, Jerry. Did it look sold out to you? We didn't to me, but there were a lot there, weren't there? No, it didn't look sold out. Uh, I also thought it was really, really strange that there was no crowd um, that second, the last fight, the Hamza Shiraz versus Tyler Denny. There was nobody there. Mm. It was empty. I know they were probably all waiting on the Joshua fight, like. but if I was there, I'd be looking to get my money's worth, mate. So I thought that was really strange. But um, it didn't look sold out to me, but it was hard to really tell just with the lighting and stuff. Um, there was a lot of people there, I know. There was a lot of people there. Do you think, Jerry, that uh, the middleweight division, it's a bit weak in that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no one to really talk about. Um, but Hamza Shiraz, could, uh, it could be a perfect opportunity for him to dominate. Well, they're going to want to try and get to Canelo, aren't they? Because they're moving up to 168, so they want to get that Canelo lottery, which is like winning the title as regards financial rewards, isn't it? Yeah, because he's the top dog, and he's obviously like the you know the biggest name in boxing, and has been for quite a while. So, yeah, would okay. he would Canelo fight though? Okay, well, we've got a lot to get through. I just want to point out first of all our sister channel, Porkers International. And uh, thanks for, to Carl for, us for the shout out and um, a text last week. Yeah, I accept an offer to go on your channel, Carl. I don't really do collaborations with other channels, but I'll come on. As soon as I've known you 17 years, I think it's least you can do. Or you can come on here. Uh, and Kent, people say, Porky, where's part one, Kent? I put part one out, part two, part three, and 12 other videos in space of one minute. If we've all got mumble jumbled, it'll be one of the last 15, Kent's part one, which is better than part two and part three. That's that cleared up. Uh, I don't know how we're going to approach this one. What do you think to the national anthem, the Saudi national anthem being played with two Brits in the ring? I, I've never seen that before. Have you, Jerry? No, it's strange. Uh, don't really understand that one. Um because I was just, I was watching some motor racing earlier and uh, I kind of was thinking, must be a bit weird, all these guys from different countries having to stand whilst the American, it's indie car racing I was watching earlier. And I was just kind of going, yeah, they play the American, the American national anthem at every race. And then I was like, well, I suppose it's in America. That's where the event is being hosted. That makes sense. And that's what got me thinking, so how come they played in the, the Saudi? Saudi Arabia national anthem before uh, the Joshua fight on British soil. Uh, that's strange, mate. Never seen that one before. Okay. Uh, my pal Lyndon's dog races at uh, Perry Bar on Tuesday. I think it's Bart Ted. It runs. That's uh, looking good if you want to fancy a bet. Perry Bar at Birmingham. 
Bart Ted, it's called, or Bert Ted, Bart Ted, I think it is, Tuesday. Uh, Big Richard, you know who comes on channel? Richard, yep. thank you very much. Uh, he sent me a case of uh, wine, had it delivered. Yeah, I think he feels sorry for me being down here. There's nobody can talk right down here. <laughs> I'm really joking. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much. Uh, I also have a drink to uh, Big Meech for his performance last night. He made my day. Pop, pop, bang. All them people who go like that, I think you're dicks. So, it's a bunch, of, drink, grapes. Drink and bunch Rabina. of grapes. Get over it. Go on, mate. Drinking Rabina, though, are you? Yeah, I wish it were. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so in the case of it. So, thank you very much, Richard. He's, uh, he's just bought a boat, actually. Must be nice, eh? Well, I can't afford a rowing boat, me. Uh, did you think the entrances were a bit like WWF? You know, it's getting a bit like that, do you think? Whatever happened to, like, Mike Tyson, he came out with towel over his head and, you know, welcome, with that song on it, background, Welcome to the Terror Dome, you remember? Yeah. Back in the day. There's none of that now, is there? It's all this uh, Hulk Hogan nonsense, isn't it? You know, it's, it's that. Um, that's, that was like the... Uh, I can't remember. When did they show the, the mini-movie thing? That was that was just garbage to me, like. I don't want to see that nonsense. I don't want to see that nonsense. Joe Gallagher said before, and uh, this is the first live dog that... Uh, Joshua's been in with a uh, 27-year-old. Obviously, Joshua's 35 and in a couple of weeks. And it proved that, didn't it, Jerry? But we've been saying it for a long, long time, haven't we? You know. Yeah, pretty much. I still, um, I mean, my I picked Joshua. Um, but I did say he needs to survive the first five rounds. And, um, well, he got done in on the fifth round. You think, um, Jerry, all these media people, uh, they knew that as well. But they're just frightened to say uh, more than likely, um, you know, they're kind of obviously going to be on the same side as the superstar, you know, jumping on the whole um, Joshua media train, you know, because that was the, uh, that's that's the superstar, that's the, the name, um, not giving an honest opinions based on, you know, the more popular name, basically. Okay. Uh, I've got a lot to get through. Uh, Quinn Ahmed, uh, backed by South Yorkshire Packaging, my childhood friend's company, uh, Kevin's, Kevin R, and uh, wearing the Porky Corner, Porky's Corner robe and shorts. He's, in, uh, he's fighting in Bridlington today. Good luck to Quinn and his trainer, Chris Medley. Chris, come on, get down here. Get me Thailand done. Uh, okay. Liam Gallagher. What did you think to that? I've seen better karaoke singers. <laughs> I, mean, it was, I mean, I don't like Oasis, but that's, you know, that's only my opinion. Um, whenever Hamza Shira's, um obviously got that stoppage quite early on, I was like, uh, Anthony Joshua's only arriving to the, to the, the venue. I was disgusted in it. Uh, and then you have to sit through a mini uh, a mini concert. Um, I, I don't know. Garbage. That. Absolute bullshit, mate. Absolute bullshit. Absolute garbage. But uh, he's got massive dough problems and he tax man and all sorts of kids all over the place and that. So he probably needed the money, but it was absolute garbage. But everybody were chunged out of the mind. <laughs> At least persons talk about that, but everybody are out of the mind, so they're all pissed up and uh, gene him up, but very, very poor. And uh, he looked dug up, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> Joshua's Elvis Presley dressing gown with sequins on. What was that? Uh, again, just uh, something to fit his ego, really, isn't it? Um, has to be as flashy as the king. But um, what can I say? Like, um, I thought it was, it was even weird, actually, at the end of the fight as well. They were, like, talking to Joshua like he had won the fight. You know, uh, uh, Dubois is obviously not the most articulate, I have to say. Like, 
he said God bless you about four times and didn't answer any questions properly. But um, yeah, I just thought that was weird, like that they were um, they were kind of still all over uh, Joshua, even though he was the loser. Like, could but, you imagine um, being sat on an airplane next to uh, John Coffey, aka Daniel, <laughs> a, 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 a big stick? You know what I mean? He's not engaging, is he? I don't want heavyweight champ to be like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, no, mate. Um, I actually thought that was one of the worst um, I'd ever seen him speaking before. He was just... Um, oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's all I can say. He strikes me as like a 12-year-old boy in a in a, in a, a uh, man's a man's body kind of thing. You know, a bit, a bit immature. Never gave Dom and Charles any props afterwards, did they, or anything. Oh, that rim back no. the beast. I mean, he was asked actually. Go on. He was asked actually, I think, about Don Charles, and he just he just bypassed it. He didn't he didn't say anything. I think that's in bad taste as well. Um, no matter if Don Charles is just there as a a prop trainer, you know, and it is basically Daniel and his dad. Um, I mean, at least pretend. Pretend, you know, like you could turn around and yeah, yeah, thanks, the Don, you know, fake it a bit. He didn't even bother. I don't think he had the gumption to to do something like that. Okay. Uh, personally, I think Joshua's desire has gone. Uh, do you agree? Um, yeah. Uh, he doesn't seem to have that kind of um, doing it for the sport. It's just um, money, but I mean, he's admitted to that, so I guess, I guess he's uh, he's not lying. Um, but um, yeah, he, he doesn't have the, uh, he doesn't seem to have the, the love of the game, really. Okay, uh, Joshua, now Dubois, and then Dubois will probably pass the torch to Moses Atome uh, from. The main guys in this country, because I think Fury's finished now. Usyk's not a Brit. As regards Brits, I think that's how it goes. And it's just, it's not in at will for Joshua, but well, he's been wrapped in cotton wool, hasn't he? I pointed it out. I've been banging on about it years. Give me his best three wins. Because if Vladimir, an old man, Povetkin, an old man, Poole, F.O. Parker, they're not roadman killers, are they really, Jerry? No, um, I like both those guys, um, Pulev and Favetkin. And I actually was thinking about this because I know this is, you know, you've referred to this multiple, multiple times. So do you think Pavetkin could have done him uh, a few years earlier? Oh, yeah. I think Vladimir would have done him two years earlier. Well, Vladimir um, nearly did do him. And by his own admission, took the foot off the gas. And I, I, I knackered, he said, didn't he, in that interview, he says, I was just knackered, I didn't, I didn't have enough in that t- in rest of the round to finish him off, you know, fighting a young man, wasn't he? I believe him. So it just goes to show you how good Vlad, I think, was. Um, but, yeah, do you think Pulev would have done him um, a few years earlier as well? Maybe five years earlier, I think, yeah. Maybe five years earlier, I think Pulev would have given him a good run for his money. I thought the referee were awful, Marcus McDonald. There were six knockdowns, not five. And he kept breaking them up and penalising the bar for Ed. I didn't see any Ed going in there. I didn't. I, I, I have, to, have to say, didn't see much head either, which is, you know, I was expecting a bit and I didn't see much head either. I think he tried to help Joshua. I, I thought he was going to stop it and they won at rounds. And yeah. uh, he looked like it were over. And then he just did, they let Ben Davison put the stool down in the ring before the referee didn't even finish. They were more or less saying, look, he needs to be sat down here. This round's over. You know, and, and that put pressure on McDonald. They, they, they tried to fudge the way through. They were given every opportunity. But uh, I see Ben Davison down the road now. I do, honestly. I do, because if they can do that to McCracken, after, uh, they can do it to Ben Davison after being... Uh, after Ruiz done him, knocked him out, they got rid of McCracken, didn't they? Oh, McCracken were phased out. And I don't know what happened to all this... What the gad was saying is really focused on this and that. It's just pure liquors. They know the boxing. Gareth A. Davis, Yacoogan Cassius, Puppy Parsons, all of them. I keep banging on about it. They know the boxing. They know what one of the opponents he's had since Usyk. Joshua's not been a world champion for nearly four years, right? 
they know, but they didn't want to speak about it, did they? And now look at you all, experts after the fact. Now, even it takes a small and an independent channel like me to point it out, with my guys who come on here, the commission, when we say it, we're haters. When Carl Frotch says it, he's a hater. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. When Barry McGuigan says it, he's a hater. He's another Hall of Famer. You know? And we've got these people we access, shithousers. Sends me crazy. That referee saved his bacon many times, but Ben Davidson, you don't roll. What about the Ben Davidson performance centre pop pop bang? It means shite on the night. First road man he's been in with since Dylan White. Am I right? As regards age. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. You know, they've wrapped him in cotton wool. It's seven and a half years since he was exposed against Vladimir. He's been wrapped in cotton wool ever since, unless it's been big paydays. You know, it... They ripped the fans off, and now this rematch clause, Jerry. What do we think about that? I'm going to end up having a look in Ulster. <laughs> I actually couldn't believe that, mate. I didn't. I didn't know anything about that. And then Eddie Hearn's talking about, oh well, we'll see if he wants to exercise the rematch clause. I exercised it uh, actually, last hour. It's been exercised rematch. It, oh, it has. I, I near choked on yeah. my beer, mate. I'm like, what? He's categorically smashed the bits in that fight. Um. I'll give him credit. The fellow was trying to get up at the very last minute. I'm going to give him credit for that. Uh, Does it need you know. a rematch, Jerry? Yes or no? No, it doesn't mean a rematch. Did Frotch Boutte need a rematch? No. He had one, though, a clause, and Eddie went, eh, it's not needed. Well, this is not needed. You got six knockdowns. Come on. They had it against Ruiz. That didn't need a rematch. In the rematch, he ran for his life. What's he going to do this time? He's not going to run for his life this time, is he? Hey, He's just going to get lit up. I mean, all this... Did you see Tony Bellew? Shadow boxing when, when uh, Joshua got two punches in the end of fight, in round five. Bellew started shadow boxing, didn't he? Going, oh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Eastwood. <laughs> Started doing all that, did he, Tony? The bell end. You bell end. Did you see it? I didn't see that bit, no. <laughs> oh, with Tony Bell, you what were you doing shadow boxing when Joshua got a couple of punches in the end? The last hurrah, the last dance. Oh my god. Bell, you went into full shadow boxing mode. Oh my god. Tony Bell, you was not even relevant now, Joshua's history. Yeah. At least Joe Gallagher called it, didn't he, when he said, look, his first live dog is being in here for donkeys. And, you know, the fans are the ones ripped off, but could you see the brass neck on these, putting that on again? How could they sell us that again? But for, worse than that, Jerry, how could they sell us Fury versus Joshua now? They've got 20 knockdowns between them. Defensive geniuses, listen. Carl Frotch was dropped twice. Carl Zaggy was dropped four times in the career. Frotch is, uh, is supposed to have a crap defence. Look at the killers he went in with. And look at these guys. They're getting knocked about. Oh. Jerry, will they put Joshua Fury on? Can't do it now, can they? Come on. You know what people are going to watch for it. an area belt? Best of the rest, mate. People are going to want to see it. You know they'll want to see it. Listen, I don't give a toss, like, but they want people. Will people will want to see Fury against Joshua? Jerry, you know, last week I put a video on, and it said March two thousand and twenty-five, Joshua versus Joyce at the O2, and yeah. I got abused. They actually got pictures of my kids off Facebook. And superimpose all sorts onto them. These sickos on here, right? But you know, I'm I'm too thick skinned for all that now. I didn't used to be, but listen, what did I say? I said he'll get done. But they're not gonna let him go. He signed a lifetime deal with Macho, so they're gonna keep milking him. Is that punch drunk now? Is there gonna be people in his head saying you need a new trainer? Oh, we'll we'll bring you back, we'll do this, we'll do that. 
take your money and run. You're a fraud. An absolute fraud. Nobody's going to buy into this now, surely. But you can imagine Eddie Hills, can't you now? Reeling Joshua in. He'll have a meeting with all his little lieutenants, all these little liquors. You've got to big him up. You've got to do this. We're going to bring him back. They can't bring him back now. He's smashed to bits. He's in worse than Nick than Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> They'll bring him back. They'll bring him back. I can see oh. the Fury fight happening. Listen, mate. I can see it happening. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, mate. An absolute bad taste in my mouth. Eddie Hills and uh, Devin Haney going at it ringside, somebody were telling me. Arguing with her? Yeah, somebody just sent me a screenshot of uh, uh, some Twitter thing or Insta. Crusher Ben were putting it out there as well. Eddie and David Ayn and that, you know, stuff like that, you know. It can just be put up jobs. They could be putting Devin Ayn in with uh, Connor Ben or something, because he was there. And it's on Connor Ben's uh, Insta as well. Look, put up jobs with these people manipulating social media. They've been doing it for fucking 13 years now. So I don't believe anything. Why would Devin Ayn come to London to have beef with Eddie Hills? It's all fake nonsense. Don't believe a word. Don't believe a word. We don't believe anything, do we, Jerry, that we're told? No way, mate. It's all bullshit. I don't believe nothing from that lot. Absolutely nothing. But I know I called it. But like I said, it's nice to see Joshua fighting somebody under, uh, under 30. You mind under 40? Because but then again, when you look at the CVs of Joshua Wilder and Tyson Fury, they're all pish. For the money they've had out the out of the game, pish, absolute yeah. pish. Do you know what I mean? Usex dealt with all of them except Wilder, and he'd do him, he'd do him in a round. But uh, now they're saying Debar beats Usex. What are they going to do? Wait out while Usex forty. Do you know what I mean? It uh, leaves a bit. But we know what we saw, don't we, last night, right? And if they try and sell that as a rematch. Who oh, 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 could buy into that? Who oh, could buy into I, that? I, what could what could what could Joshua do different? What could he do different? I, I, I don't see the capability in him. I mean, he couldn't keep the ball off him. I mean, he was the bigger guy. Why could he not keep him off him? If he can't keep him off, then he's screwed because I said the ball was going to come out all guns blazing, and he did, and he he um he just couldn't miss. Uh, if AJ can't keep that guy off him, he he can't beat him. Well, uh, AJ, like I say, he looked nervous going to the ring, and I I don't think he's got the desire there. When you've got millions in bank, I don't know. But the excuses coming out from ex fighters and media people because they know there's a rematch club, saying things like, "Well, he never recovered from first punch." Well. It's a boxing fight. It's like somebody going one nil down and then hanging on, uh, and then scoring four in the last few minutes, making it five nil. Oh, they never recovered from that first goal that went in. Look, they hit people in a boxing ring. They they they're there to be it. And the bar's job is to hit Joshua, and his job is to get out of the way. If you can't get out of the way, you've been hit, haven't you? Um, well, the excuses coming out from ex fighters and media people because they don't want to rock the boat. Everybody wants access. Look. Why don't they just come out, you Steve Bunters and Barry Jones and all that? Why don't they just come out and say, look, he's been a short fighter since 2017. Since Vladimir exposed him. I know he got through that with a win, but the guy was 42. 18 month on settee. Since he got through that fight against Vladimir, they've wrapped him in cotton wool and he's had selected opponents. They've talked wild. They've talked a good game. We didn't go near him. They thought Derek Chisora winning three rounds against Usak would be an easy fight with Usak coming up from Cruiserweight. A load of rubbish. A load of rubbish. Look what Hunter did to McCauley. These ex-fighters and media people, they're the problem in boxing. You, you know your media guys, right, who are, who are ex-fighters. They all want to get a shilling, don't they, because they're all on skid row. They're the problem because it goes from them to the fans. The only people that are telling it straight are me. And the Cobra, and a few other, few other channels, you know, a few other hardcore 
uh, channels. Uh, Terry Terry does his bit, doesn't he, on his IPO boxing on Twitter and whatnot. Boxing asylum, them lads. There's not many telling it straight, Jerry. What us lot do? We know what we see. But the problem is the media, they're being manipulated. It's a massive, massive problem. They're needed for your promoters. I mean, you know, have you noticed when Eddie's had been interviewed by IFL? They sat with selected questions behind the fucking camera. And they're giving answers and it's all it's all manipulated bullshit. Eddie won't have fallen out with Devin Haney. Only two weeks ago, they were saying they were flying him over as a guest. Now, all of a sudden, they've fallen out. There's not been no team press for two weeks. He got that fight down as a no contest for him. Haney should be blowing him off. Not having a go at him. It's fake beef. And isn't it funny how somebody caught it on camera and caught all the sound of it? It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Stop manipulating the fans. Eddie Hills, you born liar. With your 6 and 0 record. Amateur, load of shite. Oh, by way of. Ripping through the amateur ranks as a super heavyweight. Why didn't he carry on? It could have been new Joshua. It could have been the new Audley. <laughs> just pissing up my leg. Ricky Atten's told him to retire. What do you think, Jerry? Uh, Joshua to retire? Yeah, um, of course. I, I think he should retire. Go on, piss off and take your money. I don't like you. I don't like I it, me. Jerry, I don't like Joshua, me. But I'm willing to come out here and say it. Where's all you Joshua fans that were sticking it to me all week? Where are you? Where are you, pop pop bang, eh? You've gone missing. At least one man who's who's been missing a few months back on the scene, Big John Fury turn. Listen, he got to open of an envelope, him. He got to open <laughs> to open to. What were John Fury's reason to be there last night? Were any of his lads fighting? No. So what no. was he there? Were he working there in a in a capacity with press? No. So what were reason there then? Freeloading tickets and just wanted to meet Mix. That's what I see. So uh, Shane Fury came out and he said he's now rewatched Fury versus Usyk and uh, he had Fury losing first time, which is a good thing to say about it, brother. He's now saying that uh, he's seen it as Fury won or it could have gone either way. What do you think about that? Hey, what? Big Shane Fury. It's on. It's on internet on his interview. Oh my god! Um, I don't know, mate. Um, okay. Eyes bigger than his belly. He must have um, been on some kind of drugs, mate. Because I give him credit for being more honest than anyone else out of his, you know, out of um, the the Fury team. I thought that was good, good on him, like you know, being a bit more honest. So if he's rewatched that, and now he thinks he could go on either way, or that. His brother won. I don't know, mate. He's obviously fallen down the stairs and hit his head. <laughs> what about Big Malk? Big Malk watch. Big Malk with his big bins. Big old Malk with them giant bins. Doing interviews saying, oh, it's not about money and, uh, and Standard Bar doesn't owe me any money. Well, not what you were saying all week. Now, all of a sudden, you're backtracking. Listen. Stop making it about you, Big Mal. You're irrelevant. You're irrelevant in boxing. Stop it. Stop it. And another thing, go get yourself some new glasses. Oh, big it. Walking around like Elton John in them big bins. You look like what did you think? Andy. What did you think of Frank Warren calling him stupid? Well, he's stupid, isn't he? Let's have it right. Look at shape I'm in here, Big Mal. Let's have it. Uh, Nazim Ahmed, does he need to rinse his mouth out with TCP? Because every time I see him, he's fawning over Turkey Al Sheikh, aka Triple T, tea towel turkey. Man with a tea towel on his head dictating. And you, Nazim Ahmed, you're a joke. You were run out of Sheffield and now you're down there. Listen, you're an embarrassment. An absolutely embarrassment, Nazim Ahmed. Go rinse your mouth out with Savlon. Uh, Willie Hutchinson, I like him. Willie Hutchinson, do you? He's got heart. Uh, he's a, he always got heart, absolutely. Um, he's a bit cocky, but I mean, you know, he gave a good account of himself. Um, last night, um, you know, hit the deck a few times, um, kept fighting, 
I give him the last two rounds. The referee were on his case, though. Wasn't he? he had that knockdown, and the referee were on his case. He took a point off him, didn't he? Uh, I don't know what, what the judge were watching who gave it as a Willie Hutchinson win. Do you? No. Uh, do, you that just to, do you think that was just to please Brick Top? I, it's got to be something dodgy. Got to be something dodgy there. Right. What, 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 what were you watching, you, right? Re uh, judge. Well, you've got a man here who's had a point to cop, he's been dropped, and you're giving it by that, and you're giving him the fight by that many rounds. Well, I haven't got the statistics in front of me, but the scorecard for that judge, and then look at the other scorecards, look how many rounds they were apart, Jerry. What, what, what were the scores? Can you have a look on your thing there? Oh, here, hang on. I don't actually have it on. Let's just check here. <laughs> Maybe, let me have a look at my new white phone. I'll see if I can beat you to it, Jerry. We get, let me get through all this uh, rice first, right? Let's have a look. <laughs> well, we're, we're, still, we're still on black and white. Oh, my God. Story in my life as well. Uh, I can't see. Oh, oh here we are. <clears throat> here we are. Willie Hutchinson. 113, 112 to Hutchinson, 115, 110 to Boatsy. Yeah, so we've got uh, uh, 117, 108. So, so that one's 117, 108. So one round. Don't know. How can there be 10? How can Judge Salvador Salva and Gregos Mel Melender, how can they be uh, 10 rounds out? In a 12 round fucking fight. How can that fucking be? How can that be, Jerry? 10 rounds out in a 12 round fight. What are you fucking watching? You corrupt. What are you watching? 10 rounds out in a 12 round fight. Pop, pop, bang. Hey? Eh? And I get slagged for bringing this stuff up. Jesus. Hold on. Let's put it back in the bag of fucking rice. Big, big shout out to Lyndon at Walsall. Craig at Coventry. Thanks for offer, mate. Might take you up on that. Nice. Uh, I have my number a bit, actually, Craig, from Coventry. It's nice to know that through social media, people who, who watch my channel have got in touch and they say, come and have a night with me, Big P. We know you don't know many people down here. No, I don't. I'm already I'm already uh, making my presence down around here, especially in Brown Hills. Uh, yeah, uh, Willie Hutchinson. I don't know where he goes now. I don't want to see a rematch with Boatsy. I want to see him get a little bit fitter. He looked a little bit fleshy to me. Uh, I wouldn't normally say this, but I'd like to see him go back to flex and get in shape a little bit, you know, because flex gets him in shape, doesn't it? If anything, you know what I mean? By hook or crook. But uh, go back to flex and take it from there. What do you think, Jerry? Do you think he was fleshy? I didn't think he was fleshy. Well, if you go look at the fight again, to me, he looked a bit fleshy. If you're in a WBO incident belt and, and obviously better be and Bivol fight and belts get split up, you're going to get all graded to world champion. You should be getting in better shape than that. That's just my, my opinion. Uh, maybe it's because he's a, a, a young man. He might, might be a bit of puppy fight, but I don't know. But I'd like to see him in better nick. And he were gassing. He were looking for. He were looking for breaks all the time. Did you notice that? It, yeah, he was. Yeah, I saw that was. with Joshua as well. He looked, he looked like he gassed as well. But you know, it is what it is. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be critical of Willie Hutchinson because I actually like him, and I think all that switching and stuff like that he was doing. I think he was confusing Boatsy. And the, there were times in that fight where I thought he had Boatsy on the hook, but he just couldn't. Capitalised because they weren't fit enough. A bit like Josh Warrington. Did you watch that fight? I missed that bit. I well, to it on me, today. Josh Warrington uh, obviously got beat comprehensively. We were looking to hold all the time and that. Now earlier on in Josh's career, he was first person to complain about being held and all that. He was holding all night and spoiling and that. And that's the signs that you're not fit. You're not fit. Not fit. Taking breaks. He's throwing 50% of the punches that he used to throw, not as many feints. And it's old age catching up with you at that age. And they've had it off, haven't they, Warrington? They've done well. 
And uh, good luck to him. But uh, for me, he's done. His goose has cooked. But what, I think so. you know, we're not allowed to say that, are we? Uh, if you say that, you're uh, you're a prick. Dylan White and Chisora. What we got left? Four minutes. Dylan White and Chisora trilogy. They had to sit down. Do we want to see Dylan White and Chisora in a trilogy? I personally don't. Chisora's forty-one. What do you think? Um, no garbage. Um, again, the the casuals will love that. Um, but no, I think that's garbage. Okay. Dylan White is not relevant. Uh, Josh Kelly beat Izzy Davis uh, in a mandatory decision win. Good luck to him. Uh, Sonny Edwards were complaining about uh, a few things about that fight, but I thought Josh Kelly won comfortably. Crusher Ben was called out by Chris Eubank in an interview. I think that, that dog won't hunt anymore now. Will it that one? It's gone, isn't it? That one, yeah. No way, mate. What about Chris Eubank Jr. again? She has. That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think I know who'd win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> overall, the actual show, what would you give it? I'd give it a, a nine, me, would you? Uh, I was going to say seven or eight. Seven or eight. Well, I'm going to give it a nine for effect and all that and the fact that Big Meech finally got put in his place, but the powers that be, they're not going to get rid of Joshua because he pulls in a crowd, is commercially brilliant, and how has he ended up as a challenger in a fight coming out second and getting a fucking rematch clause? How can that be? How can that be, Jerry? Jerry, help me to help you with that one. Help me, Jerry. Help me. I need fucking help. Ross, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Um, he, he shouldn't really be in that spot. Um, but it's the, it's the name. It's the media behind it. It's all that stuff that we, we don't like, um, basically can put people in these positions. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good, is it? It's not good. Terry Chop and Dharma, you have swerved the Zoom today because you picked Joshua. He's swerved me, hasn't he? I picked Joshua as well, but I'm not ashamed. He picked, you picked Joshua? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, not because I can't stand the guy. I just don't like frauds, mate. I know a lot of things that have gone on behind the scenes with that. With that big stiff up there at the EIS, they got away with murder. A lot of things have been hushed up. They've had it off, and they've kept a lot of things. They've controlled the media for years with him, you know, absolute years. He's had a he's had a free run to do what he wants. He's a bully, a sullen bully, and he got his comeuppance last night. And I'm glad about that. But he's a fraud, mate, an absolute fraud. And I'm willing to come out and speak like that. But a lot of people around him. And a lot of people that get access to them, they feel the same as me. But you've got no gonads. You don't say a fucking word. The guy's a fraud. Absolute weapon of a man. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big beach. Pop, pop, bang. I've had a heavy one at me to bed. Oh, really? <laughs> you are. Really? Yeah, I thought it was... Oh, that. I, kept... I keep hearing stuff. What's that fucking... No, I've got... Too many horror movies, movies, mate. Hey? Too many horror movies. You're shitting your pants. Yeah. I keep... I keep, uh, I keep thinking they're coming for me. I keep thinking Big John Fury's coming down. Drive, what, what's going on here? <laughs> that's, to that's a total nightmare. Par paranoia, mate. Bit of paranoia. I'll be like this for another 12 hours, and then I'll just go... Oh. <laughs> but other than that, I'm very happy at the moment. It's a Sunday. I'm gonna uh, I'm not probably eat now today. I might eat something tomorrow. But I'm very happy. I hope you're well, Jezza. Uh, got a few things to do today, so I'll be busy. You go steady, mate. Miss, when are you gonna get rid of that Magnum Tash? <laughs> so long as you keep banging on about it, I'm gonna keep it, mate. <laughs> All right then, Jerry. Well, listen. Thanks for coming on. You've been a real pleasure. Give my respect right, and uh, my love to your missus and I hope you're well. Have a great day. Are you watching football, Jerry? Um, no, mate. Don't follow football. What have you got planned for the rest of the day? Uh, have to look after the garden, mate. Have to get the two lawns cut and do some strimming. You'll get Doing some weights before that, though. We'll get stuck in then. You take care, mate. No, peace no out. worries. Take it easy, mate. Bye, right, mate. Cheerio, mate. Bye, right, mate. That were Jerry. Women love him. Men want to be him. Pop, pop, bang.
I'll see you later.